Now, I'll give a really good example. A200, which a lot of people are familiar with, that's our broad Australian passive ETF. That's 0.07%. Mm-hmm. So it's a very, very small fraction of what you might be paying an active manager to build a portfolio for you. Welcome to Get Started Investing ETF Deep Dive. In this bonus series, we're going to be exploring everything there is to know about exchange traded funds or ETFs so that you can feel confident to start your investing journey. This series is proudly supported by BetaShares and we've brought in some of their experts to break it all down for you. My name is Bryce and as always, I'm joined by my equity buddy, Ren. How's it going, bro? I'm very good, Bryce. I'm loving this mini series so far. Yes. ETFs, definitely one of the hottest topics in the equity mates community. We had Ellie on last time yes. to break down the basics of ETFs, what, what it means. Uh, and now I'm really excited to get into this one. What are the actual options out there? What, what can you invest in? And to help us through it, uh, we have one of the experts from BetaShares, Adam O'Connor. Adam, welcome. Thanks for having me, Jens. So in this episode, as Ren said, we are going to be walking through what are your ETF options. As we said uh, at the start of the show, thousands of options worldwide. Um, we'll kind of dig into a couple of them here in Australia. Um, But for those of uh, the audience who haven't listened to our first episode with you a couple of years ago, I think it was, where we spoke hack and all sorts of wonderful things. A little while ago now. Got me very excited about ETFs, that conversation, (laughs) I've got to say. So hoping to repeat the magic again today. (laughs) um, Can you just do a quick intro, a bit about your background, and then we can kick into it? Yeah, sure. So... um, Basically, my title better says I'm involved in capital markets and advisor services. So a couple of different roles there. I deal a lot with um, trading and execution for for large ETF trades. And, you know, on the other side, day to day, I deal primarily with financial advisors and and brokers around Australia, talking with them around ETF options and, and what they're doing in their portfolios. And trying to maybe see if we can, you know, fit in there and, and how our products might fit with their clients. Awesome. So the perfect person to have in to, uh, <laughs> to walk us through all the products available hopefully, in the ETF hopefully. landscape. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess let's start at the start. Um, why do you think an in- investor would choose to include ETFs in their portfolio? Perhaps some of the pros and cons of ETFs compared to other investing options that are out there? I think the the primary reason for, for using an, an ETF and why they've got so popular over recent years is uh, firstly, diversification. Um, you know, basically diversification is simply about, you know, not putting all your eggs in one basket for want of a better term. You know, you hear that analogy come up all the time, but it's so important. An ETF is just a really easy way to get a, a, a large basket of assets. Um, and that can, and you know, there's a whole range of different ETFs across different um, different assets. You can also get ETFs of ETFs, but the core thing is, you know, you're not just buying a, a single stock or a single bond. Yeah, nice. Um, you know, the other reason, uh, which is, you know, why investors in Australia have really gravitated towards them, is access. So, you know, ETFs give you a really easy way to access markets and asset classes that you might not have even previously had access to or had any idea of how to do it Mm. you know you can go and get a gold etf you know we hold we have a gold etf that you know holds physical gold in vault on behalf of unit holders where's Um, the vault (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's in London, probably under probably under armed guard. But yeah, it's, uh, that's where that, that's where they keep it all. Nice. But, uh, no, it's at Beta Shares, <laughs> yes, yeah, right. yeah. Fifty Market, Market Street, Street, Sydney, <laughs> Level Eleven. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, it's access or, or things like you know India. Mm. You know, mm. it, I, I wouldn't have even told you how I would have gone about and bought an Indian equity before we launched our India ETF, right? And mm. I'm in the industry, mm. so. <laughs> It's, it's, you know, giving, giving investors and, and investors who are just starting out easy ways to access different markets, access different asset classes and do it in a way that's diversified. So diversification, uh, not putting your all, all your eggs in one basket, access. Um, and then there's probably one more that we should cover off here, which is cost or fees. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's, that's probably a main one and, and probably remiss of me not to have covered that first. But ultimately, you know, ETFs versus your traditional, you know, active managed funds. You can have active ETFs, but the ETF that, 
you know, most of your listeners who are starting out would probably be familiar with is the low cost broad equities ETF. Mm. And the, one of the reasons they got so popular in the first place and, and why they continue to get more and more popular is they're giving investors a way to access and build a portfolio where you're not having to pay a professional manager to run that for you. And I don't need to go into, you know, all the data and research that's gone into, you mm. know, buying the market, buying the whole market, passive investing and doing it and controlling costs. Um, mm. You know, it's an easy way for them to do that and then build a low cost portfolio. So just for people who hear that term, you know, ETFs are low cost and don't really understand what that means. Can you put into context like the cost of an ETF compared to some of those other funds? Yeah, exactly. So you might, you, you know, you mentioned before that the um, actively managed fund might be say 1%. So that's charging you, you know, on your total portfolio, you have to pay 1% a year of that to that manager to run that. Now, I'll give a really good example, A200, which a lot of people are familiar with, that's our broad Australian passive ETF. That's Mm 0.07%. So it's a very, very small fraction of what you might be paying an active manager to build a portfolio for you. Yeah, nice. And I guess the the key... Um, message for that is that if you're investing over a long period of time, that 1% year after year after year adds up, adds up, and then that 0.07%, the difference between the Mm. two is quite significant over a 40-year period. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that, you know, believe from an investment standpoint that one of the only things you can control is cost. Mm. So if you want to build wealth and compound that over time, the best way to do that is to control the costs of your portfolio. Well, the number one equity mates policy is we hate fees and that's exactly why because you can control it and it makes a difference. Yeah. So Adam, you've gone through a list of uh, the pros there. Um, Are there any sort of high level cons of ETFs that we should sort of be aware of when we're sort of looking at the ETF versus individual yeah. stocks. I mean, I definitely wouldn't say there's cons, but there's definitely things for people to be conscious of when they're investing in an ETF and things we're always reminding people. It's like when you are investing, know what you're investing in. Understand what uh, the index or the ETF is trying to do. And we always say, you know, know, know what sort of outcomes you're trying to achieve. So, you know, the kind of ETF or fund that, you know, someone who's you know, more elderly, you know, retired and really trying to protect their wealth, the kind of fund that they're going to look to invest in is going to be very different from, you know, something that maybe, you know, you or I might might mm. look towards. And that's probably the, the key things to be aware of is just look under the hood um, of, of the ETF and, and know what you're investing in. Now, ETFs have been increasingly popular in the equity mates community for a number of years, but also just more broadly in Australia and and actually around the world. Um, Before we get uh, stuck into some of the major options, can you just uh, give us, I guess, an overview of the ETF landscape? You know, how many ETF products are out there and how's it been growing and stuff like that? It's bigger. It's a big landscape. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> nah, look, there, I think the numbers, there's, a, there's around 230 in Australia now. Now, to put that in perspective, I mean, there's thousands in the US. Yeah. Mm. In the US, they close more ETFs per year than, than we have listed Jeez. on the exchange, wow. right? <laughs> so it's a big universe. And, you know... We're trying to build that out. That's mm. one thing beta shares and, and, you know, there's other ETF providers similar to us that have really tried to, to build out the menu that's available for mm. Australian investors. Um, but, you know, we're by no means at the point where we, you know, they are out in the US where, you know, you could get cruise liner ETFs <laughs> and very, very sort of niche type solar ETFs. They can get quite niche yeah, because it's yeah. such, such a bigger addressable market. Um, so yeah, in in Australia, you know, we have 230 ETFs now, and I mentioned before that they range across asset classes. Now, an asset class can either be, you know, equities and stocks. Um, it can be bonds. It can be gold, like I mentioned before. It can even be currencies, or um, you know, commodities like energy. Mm. Um, so, I guess the main ones you know, in equities, you've then got Australian equities. You've got you know, you can get mid cap equities and then you can get US tech sectors like cybersecurity and robotics, 
regions like Asia. So it's quite broad in what you can access through the ETF. Mm. 230-odd ETFs available. Uh, we had a question come in from our audience that's sort of alluded to the fact that choosing between all the ETF options that are out there almost feels like picking stocks. You know, there are so many options that it can be difficult to say of all the indexes or ETFs that follow the top 200 in Australia, how do I actually distinguish between which one is right for me? So I guess if you're building a portfolio of ETFs, how should we think about the ETF process of discovery and distinguishing between, you know, you mentioned there, there's the, you know, the thematics, there's the, you know, US top 500. How do you sort of think about that process? Starting out and, and sort of building your first portfolio, I mean, you can start really simple. You can just think, hey, look, I've got $1,000 to invest here and I want, you can get an ETF of ETFs. <laughs> so meta <laughs> you can you can look at something you can start really high high level and say you know what i just want to invest what how old am i how long have i got to invest i might just buy a high growth etf of etfs and that's going to tell you that you know it's broadly looking like a portfolio should it's going to be mostly equity it's going to have australian stocks international stocks and it's going to have a little bit of bonds in it now your next level you can start to look at you know do i want the broad australian market which is what you know you sort of would look at under the hood of an ETF of ETFs, and you can go, you know, I can get A two hundred. I can look at you know the US market via the S and P five hundred, and then your next step is, and that's one of the beauties of of ETFs. You can say it's like picking an individual stock. It can be to an extent, but what an ETF can give you the the ability to do is say you wanted to buy, you know, you wanted to buy. Asian technology, for example, you were like, oh, you know, I really want to get a get a piece of what Tencent and Alibaba are doing, but you have no ability to do fundamental analysis on which one to pick. Well, you can go and buy an ETF that gives you a lot of exposure to that sector. And it says, you know, do I see cybersecurity, for, for example, is another one. Do I see cybersecurity being a more meaningful expenditure for businesses in a decade time, decade's time? Yeah, I do. That industry is probably going to grow. I have no ability to pick which individual <laughs> stock I want to I want to invest in. So I can go and use the ETF as a vehicle to invest in the whole sector. And it's that, you know, rising tide lifts all boats theory. And, you know, another analogy, you know, buy the dartboard, don't throw the darts. <laughs> so Adam, it feels like, and this is why I like ETFs, I'm sure ran in a lot of our community that you don't have to be in the detail company by company to start investing with ETFs, you can really just identify where you generally think the economy is going to go or a particular thematic, be it tech you mentioned or, you know, marijuana industry or healthcare, whatever it may be, and get broad exposure that way, which is takes a lot of the pain, I guess, and uncertainty for a beginner investor. But if you were to have um, three different, I mean, three ETFs that all give access to the Australian top 200 companies. And this is something that a lot of our investors face. Very sort of high level. How do you distinguish between which one you should be going for? Yeah. I mean, it can be, I can understand it can be quite a daunting task for someone who's just starting out. Um, you know, you can go to the fund web page and, and have a look at the different underlying. So each one will show their top 10 holdings. It'll also show what's called an index methodology which says what does that fund track what does it what does it invest in now using broad australia as an example you'll have you know our australia 200 by market cap you can have the s&p asx 200 by market capitalization so that means they hold the biggest stocks in weighting by their size now broadly speaking they are going to be very similar Another thing you can look at, which is probably also key, is look at the performance of them over one, three, five years. You'll find they're very similar. Mm. So what does that leave you with? How much does it cost? Yeah. 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 So, you know, comparing broad market exposures can be quite, can be quite um, what's the word I'm looking for? That can be very similar yeah. if you're looking yeah. at, at broad market. And, you know, then cost becomes 
becomes the biggest factor. And for people who want to find cost, where should they be looking? It's going to be on the fund webpage. I think that's going to be a theme across all three of these episodes. <laughs> the fund webpage is... Uh, Honestly, yeah. it's, it's your best resource. Yeah. If you're doing this on your own, I'm telling you, the things you got to look at on the fund webpage, mm. you can look at the index, what it tracks, look at the top 10, look at the long-term performance, and look at the um, cost. Mm. Yeah, and the cost, you'll see it expressed as... Uh, management fee, management expense ratio, expense ratio. I'm sure there's other terms that I'm not using, but different fund managers will use different terms, but they all just mean the management fee um, and it will be expressed as a percentage. They mean the, about, they mean the amount that's, that's coming out and it's always pre- expressed in, a, in an annual figure. Yeah, mm. yeah. so yeah. That, that's really the key here is yeah. if you're comparing the same ETF across providers really the determining factor is going to be your fees. And just while we're on the matter of fees, we get this question a lot, particularly from investors starting out. It doesn't mean you have to send in a check at the end of the year for what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It comes out. Really? I've been doing that. Well, I'm very much in arrears with my fees if that's the case. <laughs> it comes out daily. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do anything. It's no. all done by, you know, beta shares or Vanguard or whoever. Yeah. yeah. So I do want to pick up on one thing there because... When we're talking about broad markets, so like the biggest 200 companies in Australia, um, the the holdings are all going to be pretty similar. The biggest 200 companies are the biggest 200 companies. Very much so. When we're talking about thematic ETFs or other types of ETFs, um, you know, it, let's say there's a couple of different cybersecurity ETFs out there. Is it the same or is there something else we have to think about? No, this is where it starts to become really interesting and a, and a bit more intricate. You probably have to have to do a bit of due diligence on, on what you're actually buying. This is where you you know you start to, to go down this level of investing and start to look at sectors. It becomes important to look under the hood. Um, and without ending up down a rabbit hole too much on this, you go away from broad market market capitalization indexes and then you get to what we'd call maybe smart beta. And a lot of the thematics are based on that. And that's where you start to use things like you look at how they weight their stocks, um, or how they weight their underlying holdings, how many uh, companies mm. are in the index, and things like how do, they, how do they get to the companies that are included in the, in the index as well. So, you know, what percentage of their revenues have to be derived from that particular sector? Um, you know, you look at things like robotics, that's a really interesting one. It's, you know, there's debate and different indexes Mm. on that. Mm. And it's like, you know, are you only including pure play robotics and AI companies or are you including companies that have a very small portion of their, of their business involved in AI when really it's, it's not really a meaningful part of their ultimate, you know, revenue streams. Mm. So, you know, that's where you start to have to look and know what you're investing in. Yeah. yeah. And just for people who are now thinking about their robotics ETF or their cybersecurity ETF and wondering, what am I actually investing in? Um, is it the same answer as before? Go to the website and you can see it all there? Yeah, very much so. And I mean, you don't have to get tied down to it. You can go down, you can go down when you're comparing two against one another. And ultimately, you can probably run yourself around in circles. The reality yeah. is, mm. um, you know, understand what you're investing in. Um, but for most of the sector ETFs, you know, they're, they're, pro- they're probably going to be- give you the exposure that you're looking for. Yeah. Anyway. yeah, yeah. I think for me, speaking personally, uh, you know, if, uh, if I'm investing in like a tech ETF, I'm not going to get worried if it's got 5% Apple or 7% Apple, you know, either way it's got Apple. That's the main thing. The only thing that would get me concerned if you've, is if I was looking at a tech ETF and like, Microsoft and Apple just weren't in there. Like if there's companies that I want some exposure to and they're not there, then it's like, well, maybe this isn't the ETF for me. But, you know, for cybersecurity, I don't, it's not in my circle of competence. I don't know these companies well enough to know which ones should and shouldn't be in there. There's people smarter than me building that index. Yeah, there yeah. is an element of, hey, look, this is a, you know, this is a reputable fund manager running mm. this. There's a lot of money invested in it. Um, you know, you got, there's an element of, of trust that the manager sort of knows what they're doing in terms of building or tracking an index and, and building an index effectively with the index provider. Mm. So access was something that you mentioned, Adam, as being one of the pros of ETFs, access to different asset classes, asset to different access to different countries around the world. 
without getting into the technicalities of tax and that sort of stuff, as a beginner investor, do I need to, if say if there's an ETF that's going to give me access to India, is there anything different that I need to do from a trading point of view, or is it is it all packaged up for by the provider? No, not at all. It's it's packaged up by a provider, and that's the real beauty of it. Um, that's that's really one of the the key uh, benefits of an ETF. Nice. Is that you know there are some some considerations um, you know without going down the, the the tax side of things. Um, but you know, from trading execution and access perspective, you can just trade it on the ASX like you would, you know, any other stock listed on the ASX. So we'll get a bit more into the tax implications of ETFs and how people should think about that in the next episode. Um, so everyone should stay tuned for that, although they're all going to be released at the same time. So just (laughs) listen to that next. (laughs) So I, I think we, we've touched on a number of elements. I I guess I might just want to pause here and get you to sort of sum up uh, the options that we have available. So we sort of talked about, you know, um, there's a bunch of different asset classes and then a bunch of different countries and stuff. Um, Yeah, I guess if you, in, in, you know, so 25 words or less, I guess, if you were summing up everything that was available, uh, how would you do that? Sum up everything that's available (laughs) in 25 (laughs) words or less. Um, Yeah, okay. So you have a range of ETFs available over... Australian equities, international equities, international regions, sectors, bonds, currencies, and commodities. Underlying that are things where you can look at just the US market as the US market, or you can look at something like the NASDAQ 100, which is going to have a much bigger um, technology tilt to it, or you can look at something like an ETF we have listing um, on Friday, which is an S&P 500 equal weighting. So then you can look at different ways to construct your portfolio. So basically, any country, any investable asset class, except cryptocurrency, um, or uh, any Yet. investing theme <laughs> that you want to uh, invest in, there's probably an ETF out there for you. That's probably the way. There's, mm. If you're thinking about investing in something, chances are there's an ETF yeah, for that. Chances are BetaShares or Vanguard or some of the other ETF providers have already had that thought yeah. and have built a product for so it. So to sum yeah. it up in less than 10 words, there's an ETF for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Google, whatever your craziest idea is with ETF after it, something will be there. Yeah. <laughs> and if we don't have it, feel free to email us. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what's your uh, personal email? We'll, we'll give it out on the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, Adam, uh, everything that we've sort of touched on in terms of uh, the way that ETFs are following an index and, and managed is that sort of buzzword, passive ETF, um, passive management. The other buzzword that uh, beginners will come across when doing some research into e- ETFs is active management or an active ETF. Broadly, what is the difference between the two? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, broadly speaking, what um, people should understand from the outset is the ETF is really just a way to, you know, buy and sell. It's a structure. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a way to buy and sell your position in a fund. So, the fund is exchange traded as opposed to the way they were in the past where you used to have to you know, fill out a form, write it in and send it to a fund manager. So the original ETFs were passive. So they're the ones we were talking about that broadly track an index. They buy the whole lot, biggest companies to smallest companies, and they tend to be lower cost. Now, an active ETF is a newer form of ETF, um, and it's definitely growing, But what that is, is it's a way to get access to those actively managed funds where previously you only had to write in um, and and had to fill out the form and and send it to the manager. It's a way to get access to those in a really easy way where where you just trade the units like you would trade a, a passive ETF. And now the active ETF is different because instead of just, you know, tracking you know, the largest, the, the index largest stock to smallest stock, what you have is a professional manager on the end making decisions on what to buy and sell for you. That, that's the key there is that, yeah, your active is literally someone actively managing the shares and the companies that are within that. Passive, they are just buying all 200 and letting it do its thing. And without going too far into it, oftentimes there are 
you know, we talk about asset classes. There are asset classes where we genuinely believe that, you know, active management is necessary. So, you know, hybrids, for example. Now, we won't go into what a hybrid is, but our hybrids fund is extremely popular and, you know, that is actively managed because we think that it needs an, an active mm. manager for that asset class because it is more complex than just buying the equities market. Mm. So that's where it can be be necessary. Yep. Um, and then you have some other active, you know, equities funds where, you know, some people believe that it's a good manager, so they're worth the extra fee. Mm. We think they're worth the extra fee in some instances. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Adam, uh, we said before that there's plenty of options out there. If people have had an idea about an investing theme or an investing idea, there's probably an ETF that tracks it. We're going to, we've sort of put that to, a t to the test a little bit. We've created a bit of a game. Uh, we found some of the most obscure ETFs. None of these are beta shares examples. So, you know, they're not products that you work with. We've got some real ones and then we've made up some fake ones and we want to test your knowledge. We'd be in trouble if I didn't know real yeah. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know we've got a lot of them and it's hard to keep track of it. Uh, so, you up for playing? Yeah, 100%. All right, let's do it. Uh, so, we'll start at home. Um, first one, Australian retail ETF, real or fake? Fake. He's good. He's very good. He's good. <laughs> Obesity ETF, S-L-I-M. What? S L I M that's, Slim that's is the ticker. ticker. <laughs> is the ticker. <laughs> Fake. It's real. It's oh. real. Yeah. <laughs> um, female leaders ATF. Uh, uh, ticker W M N. Fake. It's nice. fake. Space ETF. Uh, ticker is UFO. Fake. Real. Real. <laughs> Why do I just keep throwing fake out? <laughs> uh, a millennials thematic ETF, uh, ticker M I L N. Real. It yes. is real. Yeah, yeah it sounds real. <laughs> so that sounds legitimate enough. International football ticker FIFA. Fake. Fake. I'm, not sure, fake. I'm not sure FIFA would license themselves. No. Right? True. Yeah. Right true. Right <laughs> He's good. Uh, a forensic accounting ETF, uh, ticker F L A G, flag. I'm going to say real because that ticker's poor. <laughs> it is real. <laughs> it is yeah. real. But you're not a fan of that ticker. I don't know. Flag for forensic accounting. Yeah, I yeah. guess it's like, been it's like red flag a, sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Classic, I would have done, done CSI or something. <laughs> oh, not bad. That's Hey, that's why you paid the big bucks. Classic <laughs> accounting move. Um, Credit Swiss Merger Arbitrage Liquid ETN. It's <laughs> New York Stock Exchange CSMA. Are we still playing real or fake? Oh, yeah. still are, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I'm sorry. going to say real because that is way too convoluted <laughs> yeah. to yeah. made up. So. Yeah. Do you know what, uh, from that name, would you have any idea what they do? I forgot what the name Credit, was. <laughs> Credit Suisse Merger Arbitrage Liquid ETN. I think it's going to be too I, complicated. I think it's like when... Yeah, a, if, you were buying, if, you yeah. Were, if, if you're buying... If you're buying companies in anticipation of a merger, yeah, or yeah, prior because there's to, always a little bit of a price gap. Maybe yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really Jeez. odd. Anyway, that's anyway. not uh, something for beginners. Um, you, know, you can live a long and happy life without ever investing in that ETF. Yeah. So, Adam, just to close out the conversation around what our options are, again, when people are doing research, especially for international stocks, well, it would only be for international <laughs> ETFs. They're going to come across a word. Hedged or unhedged? Um, are you able to give a, a pretty basic definition of what that actually would mean? And should it be something you consider as a beginner investor? Yeah, easiest way to understand hedged versus unhedged. If you buy an unhedged, which is anything that doesn't have currency hedged in it, what you've got to understand is if you're buying, uh, you know, I'll use US, if you're buying, you know, the S&P 500 or you're buying NDQ, the NASDAQ, what you're also buying is that equivalent dollar value in US dollars. Yes. So there's going to be two things that influence your return. It's the performance of the equities and it's the currency. What currency hedging does is it takes that second mm. asset class out of consideration. Now, a lot of people prefer unhedged. Now, unhedged products actually tend to be the bigger products. 
what the hedged where we'd use hedged versions well we have hedged and unhedged but where specifically often we do use hedged is for some of those sector etfs we were talking to before like our global energy uh, sector etf and one of the reasons for that is you know a lot of the times investors who want to get exposure to that sector want exposure to that sector they don't want to look back on their returns six months later and find out that you know global energy has rallied 20 percent but because the currency has mm. gone the wrong way they're back where they started mm. so that's really one of the reasons why you would consider currency hedging um is if you didn't want the currency you know involved in in, in your returns yes yeah. right. so for a beginner investor who's thinking about you know long-term 20 30 year time horizon um does it matter or how should they be thinking about that decision for for like a broad uh index so like the american uh s&p 500 or something like that look it can a lot of the research says that it comes out in the wash um which is why a lot of people don't really take it into consideration um you know a lot of a lot of times people people don't want to consider currency Mm. too much um yeah it's one it's one of those things yeah and then one more question on that. Uh, are the fees different for a hedged or an unhedged ETF? Uh, marginally, but generally not meaningfully at all. Okay. Is, is unhedged generally cheaper because you have to do less? S- slightly. Or? Okay. Like, like single, what's your basis points? So yeah, right. Okay. So very similar. Very similar. But hey, we, ha- we hate all fees, whether they're large or small. So, you know, every little bit counts. So, Adam, thank you for your time today uh, unpacking the universe of ETFs. I think the key message is that regardless of uh, where you're at in your journey, ETFs are certainly something that can fit into your portfolio. If you are a beginner investor, though, uh, you can almost find an ETF that suits anything uh, in terms of your investing goals or if you want to be investing in different asset classes, different countries, different regions, different thematics, there's plenty of options available. So... Um, I guess for more information on the products that you guys offer, betashares.com.au. That's it. Nice. And that'll have all the information that you need. And, you know, one of the other things, if, if you're starting out, you know, we sort of pride ourselves on, you know, our education, our collateral, our insights. So if you are trying to get more information on, on ETFs, um, you know, you can start, look, you can look on our website, on our blog and search and you can generally find the information that you're looking for nice nice one well as always a pleasure to speak with you thank you for your time adam looking forward to keeping in touch over um the next whatever period of time (laughs) (laughs) we're not we're not going anywhere i don't know if you're going anywhere no i'm not planning on it (laughs) beta shares are always pumping out new etfs bloody every second day so um yeah. Just really trying to build out that menu for everyone, and, and, <laughs> yeah. and give us plenty, and give us plenty to talk about, so I can always come back in here and um, yeah. you know talk to what what we're seeing and yeah, any and some ideas for investors. So thanks again for for having us on. It's always a pleasure to come in here and talk to you guys. Nice one.